So, Helsinki and Slush, how does it look to you? Wonderful to be here. And in fact, my team has been coming to Slush for the last three years, and they kept telling me these wonderful stories. I said, this year, I must be here myself to experience it. It's been wonderful so far. Thank you so much for having me here. Very good <laughs> work. Great to have you here. Um, let's start off with a little bit of a background to TCS. Could you give us an overview of the company and basically what you, how you run your business and what the drivers there are? Sure. So TCS is part of the larger Tata group, uh, which is um, a $120 billion group headquartered in India, but drivers businesses ranging from Jaguar, Land Rover, cars, to steel, to, uh, of course, software and services, which is TCS. TCS is uh, the world's most valuable IT services company, headquartered in India, uh, being active all over the world. Uh, Europe and the Nordics are, are very big uh, uh, interest to TCS from a market perspective, and now from an innovation perspective. Very good. How is your personnel distributed around the world? So we have a, a, a global footprint now with uh, over 300,000 employees, as, as you just heard in the introduction. Uh, I might also mention uh, we have just crossed 100,000 women employees, which makes us probably one of the largest uh, employers of uh, women, certainly in India, maybe in the world. Um, from a global footprint perspective, we have more than 20,000 international employees now, many colleagues here in Finland, in larger Nordics, and in Europe, uh, and uh, predominantly uh, based all over the world. Uh, India certainly is home to many of us. Very good, very good. Let's move over to the event we're at, and um, especially what you guys are looking at to get from Slush and, and perhaps contribute as well. So what, what really brought you here as a, as a CTO of uh, TCS? So one of my key responsibilities is to run the TCS Co-Innovation Network, or COIN, as we call it. COIN is a very systematic way by which we reach out, as I like to say, all the smart people uh, who don't work for TCS. Uh, so you could be a startup company, you could be an academic, uh, you could be working for other technology companies, um, you could be working for TCS customers. Um, Coin, it was designed about 10 years ago, I was one of the architects of the concept, to, to make sure that TCS has, first of all, the willingness to partner, secondly, the processes to partner, and thirdly, the ecosystem is created with real partners who want to engage with TCS. The emerging technology coin, which is dealing specifically with startups, is the part of of, of the innovation network, which has been coming to Slush for the last three years. Uh, and we have identified Finland, and specifically Helsinki and the ecosystem here, as one of the areas where we want to bring COIN in a significant way. Today, we have that network active in Silicon Valley, where we started 10 years ago. We have it active in Israel, no, no surprises there. We have it active in India. We have it active in Australia, in Canada, uh, in the UK. And now I hope that we will be able to formally uh, bring COIN uh, to life in, uh, in, in Helsinki and Finland. And Slush certainly is a great method to do that. Fantastic. That's good to hear. What does it exactly mean when you mean come over to Finland? What are the concrete ways that you operate, perhaps? So the emerging tech COIN is, is designed, of course, from our side it gives us a view into a 1,000 or more startup companies worldwide. What is it that they're doing? What is it that they're investing their time and talent and, and creativity? What new capabilities are they creating? It could be technology. It could be business models. It could be cloud. It could be digital. It could be whatever. That's from our side that we get this landscape of exciting things which are going on worldwide. For a startup company, or a venture capital firm, or an aggregator, like we have been dealing with the aggregators in the ecosystem here. Uh, and, and, and there are many, many uh, interesting people, like the Helsinki uh, uh, business team, the Techesh people, and so on. Um, for them, the proposition is that we can offer market access, 
Uh, you could be a startup company with a great idea, and you want to reach the global market. Uh, we could be that path to the global market. We also offer advice. We also have, offer integration capabilities with other things that might be happening in the TCS labs. It could be that some other startup company somewhere else has a little more piece of the puzzle than you have. Uh, it could be that I partner with a customer for something else. And so the whole capability gets amplified in the network. And then that amplified capability goes to the market. So you could be doing, um, I don't know, location-based services in a retail store. Right? And we could say that, hey, listen, you know what? Location-based services in retail is great, but unless you do it combined with analytics, combined with social media, combined with artificial intelligence, then you have a much bigger story. You could then become part of that bigger story. So, that, so we offer, to summarize, market access, a lot of value-added advice, maybe combination and engineering capabilities along with it, uh, which allows a startup to become successful. What do I not do? I do not invest money in a startup. I invest a lot of human capital in the startup. Uh, my firm belief is that money will become available uh, if you do all the right things that I talked about. Designing the right product, targeting it at the right market, have the right partnerships to go global. The money will come. Um, but you've got to get the basics right. <laughs> so that was going to be my next question exactly. It's um, like, like you kind of partly just answered already that it's always when you run a startup, and especially for the founders, is that partnerships are good. But like, it, what, what's the catch there? Does TCS take equity? But apparently, it's just you're looking to sort of cooperate together with the startups and, and, and uh, make new things happen in that sense. The right word is co-innovate co together. Innovate. Because you know, innovation is so many things. It's the idea. Yeah. It's the transformation of the idea to a market product or a market offering. And it's actually going to market. Right? So if you are able to do these, the best kind of money is the customer's money. Right? Uh, so you need to be able to reach the customer's money as quickly as you can. And that's what COIN is designed for. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's what we've uh, thought about in UpCloud as well. Um, what about the process? How do we go um, as a startup? Let's say we would like to work with you guys. What's the process in getting in touch with you? How do we start the, the discussion? So first of all, uh, there is a process, and I'll come to that in a minute. Sure. But what are the things that we need to first understand from what is it that TCS can add value? Uh, Companies like TCS operate in the enterprise space. So we work with the world's largest banks, insurance companies, telecom companies, um, software and technology companies, health companies, airlines, and so on. So the enterprise is our customer. So the, comp the, the startups that we would like to see must solve an enterprise problem or address a problem of the enterprise's customer. Right? So it is a company which is focused on uh, uh, either the B uh, part of, of a business to consumer space or the B2C space of a business to consumer. So that's the first sort of broad landscape idea that should be there. The second is that to narrow it more specifically, we are looking for interesting ideas in three broad buckets. The first bucket is, let me call it simplification. So enterprises today, especially large enterprises, struggle with complexity. It could be complexity of IT. It could be complexity of a back office process. It could be complexity of a sales process. It could be any sort of complexity which slows down an enterprise. It's surprising for many people here in the audience who are startups. When you become successful, the complexity problem will hit you as well, because you're growing larger. So simplification is the first theme that we look for solutions. The second big theme is, of course, the use of digital technologies. Uh, digital could be mobility. It could be social media. It could be cloud. Um, uh, it could be big data and analytics. It could be AI and machine learning. Uh, we call these the digital five forces. Um, and there are five fingers on my hand. Uh, Put together, each finger is quite interesting, mobility, cloud, big data, analytics, artificial intelligence. But if I, if I close my fist, it's a much more powerful entity. So combining the digital technologies 
or as we call it, digital reimagination, is another area that we look for interesting ideas. The third area that we look for interesting ideas is in the broad area of reducing risk to the enterprise. Enterprises are always faced with risks. They could be risks with respect to security, with respect to data privacy, with respect to governance, compliance, and so on. If there's any brilliant thoughts out there which can help an enterprise in these areas, we're looking for those as well. So that's the landscape that I look for. I also look for sustainability. I look for energy management. I look for education. I look for health. That's because of who we are. TCS and Tata Group has a very strong commitment to the environment and society and so on. But those three, simplify, digitize, and, and, and govern, are my three big business themes. So assuming you have something of interest in that space, um, get in touch with the COIN team. Um, the, the, there are people here in the audience, my colleagues are here, uh, or just go to the TCS website. We, we're just about launching a, a, a private social media community for COIN called COIN Wire. Uh, so you would have to get in touch with TCS through any one of these channels. There is a, a diligence process. We first try to understand what you do. Is it a fit with what we are planning to do? Are we able to add value to you as a startup? Because as a startup, you have an interesting idea. You don't have too much time to talk to us. Uh, we'd like to engage quickly, understand each other quickly. If it makes sense, take you through the process where this larger story gets created. Um, as I said, maybe in combination with what you've done, what, what TCS Innovation is doing, what other companies are doing. Within about 90 days, we'd like to give a plan which says, OK, we can go to market like this. Uh, if you like the plan, we actually test it out with one or two customers. Uh, I would really encourage the coin team, TCS coin team, to look for the anchor customers here in Finland, or at least the Baltics and the, the Nordic region. Because if you're a startup, and your first customer through TCS is in, let us say, Australia or New Zealand, it's much, much more difficult to keep going back and forth to support that customer. But if your first customer is in the region, it helps. If it's in Helsinki, even better. Yeah. Right? So we can enable a lot of that. We test out the confidence of each other in the market process, and hopefully we succeed. To put it in perspective, as I said, we see 1,000 startups worldwide, uh, about 25 make it to the end of the process. So it's a fairly difficult process. <laughs> Makes sense. You need to be the best yeah. to, to work with the best. Um, how much is the demand driven by the marketplace uh, requirements, say in health, education, all the industries you just mentioned, as opposed to the startups and the founders sort of promoting themselves and you seeing value in those companies and pushing that sort of innovation together to the market. Which is stronger? Is that the demand on the market or, or the founders and, and you guys together innovating? Great question. So we look at the innovation agenda in a couple of uh, timelines. The more immediate one is, I would say, a business opportunity which is real in the next 18, 24 months. Uh, what I talked about, simplified, digitized, governed, there are a lot of things in that space which will come to life in 24 months. And startups are already investing in those. There are products which are available which can hit the market and go running. Right? Uh, but there are things which will need a longer runway. Uh, and some of those might still be in academia, they might be in, in the university uh, accelerators, they might be in incubators inside, or maybe still in research, and people are still writing academic concepts and papers on that. Uh, and that's usually three, four, five years old. So that's as far as the conventional business goes. 80% of the innovations which are, let me call them linear innovations, will come from this sort of thinking to say, uh, there are problems or there are new things that can be incrementally predicted and we should go after them. 20% of the ideas will be completely game-changing. Uh, and those are the things that I, I really pay a lot of attention to. Nobody is asking for um, you know, a concept or a business model or a technology in that space. And here is a startup which produces that. Mm. Uh, I do come across a few of them. Yeah. Uh, and I really pay a lot of attention. What are, what are some of the signals, perhaps, of 
Um, so what are some of the signals that you look for in companies, you know, the, perhaps the quiet signals here and there that, you know, this might be disruptive, this might be part of that 20%? No, it's, first of all, very difficult. Yeah. Because it's always easier to chase a business opportunity in an 18-, 24-month runway uh, because somebody who's funding you, you might be funding yourself or your university or an accelerator or a VC, uh, is not going to wait for this big idea to come and blow up in somebody's face, right? So uh, it is difficult to do it. But there are people who are bold enough to address a problem which is really large in scope. That's the first signal. That is the scope of the innovation substantially uh, adventurous and substantially ambitious. That's the first signal that I look for. The second is that the technology itself should be the least of the risks. The technology should be very, very sound, and you know, people should not try to invent it in a way which is going to take 10 years to, to go ahead and build something. So the technology should be there, uh, but the, the, the problem domain should be large. The bulk of the idea should be in the execution of the technology to address the problem. That's where the innovation really comes in. Right? Yeah. So if, if somebody is, for example, there is the, the Google X Prize, which is going on right now, to land a, an unmanned robot on the surface of the moon and to do a set of tasks. Right? There are 18 or 20 teams which are participating. It's a 25 or $30 million prize. One of the teams, by the way, is from India. Uh, that sort of thing is is a different kind of a breakthrough. It's going to break new ground in space technology, consumerize it, and so on. But it is inventing a range of technologies. Yeah. The technology risk is extremely high. The payback is high, but the technology risk is high. So I am tracking that project, but not to the extent that I'm trying tracking things that are addressing agriculture in the, developed market, in the developing world, yeah. health in the developing world, yeah. uh, fundamentally changing banking and financial services uh, in, 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 in even in developed worlds uh, like this. How to take digital technologies to the completely new level, uh, wearables and, 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 and so on. So those are the signals that I would like. Ambitions should be large. Very good, very good. Um, let's talk, we have a couple of minutes left. Um, I want to talk to you about leadership and technology and, and corporations. How has technology, in your view, um, you've seen all kinds of industries, all kinds of different levels um, and, uh, of technology and being adopted in different companies. Um, how has the role of technology changed leadership and perhaps from your own perspective as the CTO um, in, in leadership in large companies? First of all, I think the, the last 30 years or so since I, I left university and I joined TCS, uh, the extent of technology change has been extraordinary. So there's no saying that it's been a tremendously fun ride over the last 30 years. How has it changed leadership? I think it has, it has challenged leaders at all levels to really, first of all, understand what the technology can do and to think about what impact can I create on my people, my customer, markets at large, society at large with that technology. That, that breadth of vision, I think, is the biggest behavior change that technology today has done. I mean, things like this did not exist five years ago. Uh, now that they do, what is it that we can do with it is the real creativity uh, challenge that people who were in leadership positions 50 years ago uh, were not probably in that position to leverage technology. They had to think about business models more than technology. Today, technology is, is not, is not the, uh, the barrier. It's, it's an enabler for so many new things. Yeah. Are there any, uh, from your perspective, I mean, you see large companies and, and, and star, startups. Um, are there any sort of maybe takeaways that the startups can take, uh, sort of uh, adopt themselves from the large companies and vice versa from your perspective? Startups, I think, if I look at the, the, the things that I have learned from startups is the ability to take risk. Mm. Uh, startups and, 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 and Founders and people who work in small companies have an enormous aptitude to do new things. Very difficult to do that in large companies. On the other side, large companies have the ability to scale. 
which I think a lot of startups think about but don't worry about too much. Uh, but you know, the ones which do scale, I mean, you know, you know, Zuckerberg and Facebook is a great example. You know, 10 years ago, he was in, in, in a dormitory in Harvard, and today he runs a multi-billion corporation. That kind of scale is, I think, the biggest lesson that a startup can take from looking at successful startups, maybe large companies, and go with it. Very good. And one, one final question is that, looking at the event here um, today and yesterday, are there any sort of special companies or industries or technologies that you're personally uh, interested uh, in at the moment? What caught your eye? Let's put it that way. I've had, uh, just since this morning, I've had four different meetings, uh, all very productive, I'd like to say. And I hope to be able to make some announcements in a few months on some big successes coming out of these meetings. Really looking forward to it. Fantastic. <laughs> and with that, it's a wrap. Anana, thank you for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you.